Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So we have a continuation of fluoride topics. So today we have a very small topic that is prevention of dental caries by fluoride. So we have learned uh, various uh, fluoride mechanisms like systemic fluorides, topical fluorides and its uh, gross mechanisms like systemic goes to the blood circulation it enters to the mineralization stage and uh, replaces hydroxyl ion and making it fluoroapatite crystals uh, whereas in topical fluorides the mechanism is different because it uses the post-directive mineralization where this fluoride forms calcium fluoride by combining with the calcium of enamel and this fluoride will be available for further remineralization so the mechanism is different where the systemic utilizes the pre-eruptive mineralization stage which is the majority that is 90 percentage of total mineralization and it has to be done before six or seven years because most of the teeth get mineralized before seven years and post-eruptive mineralization will be utilized in topical fluorides where the 10 percentage of the mineralization will be used but that is very critical because it is lifelong remineralization and demineralization will be happening in our tooth because our teeth uh, in oral cavity are subjected to various pH and various uh, changes in day-to-day -day life so basically what happens when a fluoride is incorporated into teeth we have learned already so in today's video i will be explaining few mechanisms whereby fluoride prevents dental caries the first mechanism is fluoride increases the enamel's resistance and acid solubility because it replaces hydroxyl ion in the enamel lattice because it is a hexagonal shape which has a central void where the hydroxyl ion is located since fluoride is very highly electronegative it replaces the hydroxyl ion both are negative ions so it replaces the hydroxyl ion and it fills the void which is present inside the enamel lattice and makes it very resistant to acid attack so that is why it becomes uh, resistant uh, when there is a acid challenge happens because it forms fluoroapatite we know enamel is a hydroxy apatite crystal so this hydroxy ions that is oh ions will be removed and it becomes fluoroapatite so this hydroxyl ion that is oh ions is less electronegative than this fluoride ion so this will be replaced and this fluoro appetite will crystals will be formed so that is why it is becoming very resistant uh, and it is making uh, acid less soluble whereas the second mechanism is remineralization potential of fluoride so if we add fluoride uh, in our drinking water or if we keep fluoride in our topical or toothpaste or any solution gels forms varnish what happens is fluoride will be present in the oral environment uh, maybe in the gingival crevicular fluid or saliva and it will be act as a reservoir to uh, replenish the lost uh, ions in the teeth so day to day we may lose uh, so much of ions because of our uh, acidic uh, food taking and or brushing or many factors we lose day by day some ions but if fluorides uh, is present in the saliva or GCF it can easily replenish the lost ions so remineralization will be favored and there will be a less caries chances so topical fluorides also it has the advantages of presence of fluoride ions in the GCF and saliva so it gives fluoride ions whenever uh, there is a uh, loss of ions from the tooth surface so it always protects the tooth by providing fluorides whenever there is demineralization so remineralization potential is very important because every day it acts as a reservoir inside saliva or gcf and fluoride 
also has antibacterial effect because it interferes with the bacterial cell growth because it has inhibitive effect on the enzymes which are essential for cell metabolism and growth that is streptococcus uh, bacterial enzymes are destroyed or inhibited by this fluoride and it reduces surface energy of tooth and it can strip off bacteria from hydroxy appetite because fluoride can bind more effectively to positively charged areas on the appetite crystals than the bacteria so obviously fluoride is beneficial so if it uh, attaches on the tooth surface and the bacteria has no place to be attached there is no plaque formation and ultimately less carries so this is the antibacterial effects and the fourth point is increased rate of post-eruptive maturation so i told you already there are two phases of maturation of a particular tooth pre-eruptive maturation that is happening before the tooth erupts into oral cavity and post-eruptive maturation and post-eruptive maturation is critical because it is a lifelong process every day we have ion loss from the tooth surface and at the same time the ions are coming back to the tooth so if the ion loss is becoming more compared to the uh, re the replenishment then there is chance of caries but the rate of post eruptive maturation is why it is important because this fluoride has a special capacity to remineralize the hypomineralized areas that is its biggest advantage so wherever the tooth is not properly mineralized that areas will be soon or fastly remineralized by the help of fluoride and the newly erupted teeth we know the newly erupted teeth are still uh, need to get mineralized by 10 percentage so these teeth can uh, attract fluoride very easily so we should apply fluoride always to the newly erupted teeth that's why fluorides are applied on to the newly erupted teeth in nuts and stick we have seen it is applied on 3 7 11 13 so all the teeth are like per deciduous molars permanent molars and incisors canines premolars so soon the tooth erupts into the oral cavity we should apply fluoride because this fluoride will soon be uptake soon will be taken into the surface because these areas are hypomineralized it get mineralized only after three years or two to three years the complete mineralization happens the post mineralization happens by after two to three years and there will be a lifelong remineralization demineralization cycle so we have to use that potential once the tooth erupts into the oral cavity we should apply fluoride that is why we are applying topical fluorides into the recently erupted tooth. And the last mechanism is modification in tooth morphology. So it has seen that people who consumed fluoride water has changes in the diameter and cusp depth compared to the people who have not taken fluoride water. So it reduces the occlusal uh, depth and occlusal cavity will be lesser and uh, lesser chances of caries. Because of this improved morphology of occlusal surface uh, can be attributed to the lesser amount of caries. So the diameter and cusp depths are smaller if fluoride is present. So this is a very small topic. These mechanisms are the real reason why the fluoride prevents dental caries. Okay, so these were the mechanism. The first one was uh, it increases uh, enamel resistance to acid solubility there will be less acid soluble enamel then there will be remineralization there is antibacterial effect and increased rate of that is in hypomineralized area there is increased rate of post eruptive maturation and there will be modification in tooth morphology that's all about the mechanism of anti carry section of fluoride so i'll come up with uh, fluoride toxicity and defluoridation in my next sessions thank you